What is unpivoting? Well, it's critical to getting your data in the right shape and it solves so many problems in Excel and Power BI when it comes to reporting. I've got a simple version that I'll do in Excel and a more complicated version that I'll do in Power BI. Let's go. So here's my data for my basic example. This sort of data is really screaming out to be unpivoted. It's got the same thing, i.e. shop name, in different columns. If you try to do a pivot table off this, let me just show you quickly, summarize with pivot table. Okay, and you try and start doing, you know, you want your total sales by product. Well, you can't. You have to drag in shop A, shop B, you know, you can't do a total and you can't slice and dice by shop name or by, you know, any other category. So pretty horrible. So what do we do? Well, we use Power Query to flip those three columns into more rows, three times as many rows. So we're inside this table. I've already turned it into a table using Control T. Uh, I give this table a name and the table design, I've called it TBL Basic Scenario, up in the top left here. So that's the starting point, and then I right click and say Get Data from Table or Range, or click in here and say Data from Table Range, or from Sheet, if that's what it says in your version. So we pull this data in to Power Query, and we're now ready to do some playing about. Now, I recommend if you're gonna flip your data around, just get rid of this change type step so that you're not hard coding in shop A or shop B. Okay, there's no need to, so don't do it. So get rid of that change type step. And then control click on the columns that are already nice columns, i.e. date and products. And it's the other three we need to flip around. So we right click and say unpivot other columns. This is a glorious thing. We've now got three times as many rows, okay? So we haven't lost any data. We've just made the table longer rather than three columns wider. And then we'll simply call this shop and we'll call this units. And we'll just go control A, transform, detect data type. Date time, oh, I'd rather that be a date. Replace, text, text, whole numbers. Great, okay. What do we do with this? Well, we should give it a different name, so I'm just gonna call it basic scenario data, for example. And then home, close and load, close and load two. And you could load it to a table if you just wanted the table flipped around, or we could load it as a connection to the data model if we were gonna do a pivot table. So we can say, okay. And this then loads to the um, data model. And all we now have to do is insert pivot table. So I'll just go over here, a few cells to the right. Insert pivot table using this workbook's data model or in newer versions of Excel, you click on the drop down, and there should be an option from data model. Okay, so using this workbook's data model, and now here's the basic scenario data, and I can now put units in my values, and look, shops just goes in my rows, or shop goes in my columns, depending on which way I wanna filter it, or products goes in here, and then right-click, add shops as a slicer. It just gives you way more flexibility because I unpivoted the data, okay. That is perfect. So that's unpivoting, but it's not always as straightforward as that. So let's look at a more complicated example. So with this table, we have some audits being done by these people on these shops, on these dates. And we've got a column showing the number of review points and then there's certain criteria that uh, have to be met. So yes, they've passed those criteria for that shop, 
or no, that, or it's not applicable. Okay, so these three criteria are crying out to be unpivoted. They're the same thing, they're criteria. But if we unpivot this and make the table three times longer, then this 20 will get repeated three times, and this 10 will get repeated three times. So we'll end up with, rather than 85 review points, we'll end up with three times as many. And your DAX then has to get more complicated to handle this. And none of us like complicated DAX. So this would be one way of approaching this. And I'm going to go for a very sort of simplistic approach. Um, let's do this in Power BI. So I've got a Power BI file. Um, this is my template file that I start my projects with. It's already got a measures table in and a calendar. If you're not too clear on the calendar table, um, a little link will pop up and I'll put a link in the show notes as well. The calendar is in there for hooking up and doing analysis by day. I've got relative periods and things like this. So go check that out. Right, let's go and get that Excel data. So I'm just going to go and close the Excel file down. I'm going to go Excel workbook. There's the unpivot file. And it's scenario two. Right click, transform data. Here we have scenario two. And let me just show you what happens. I'm just gonna minimize this little window a second. If I go across and highlight these four columns, they're all nice columns. And then here's the criteria and I right click unpivot other columns. See my numbers get repeated and I can't simply add those up to give me total number of review, review points anymore. And my DAX might need to be an average or some sort of special, you know, DAX in there to handle that. That's not great. So this is really a bit of a, a data modeling challenge. So what I'm going to do is start by just renaming this one. Okay. And I'm, this is going to be my master source. And then I don't want this to get loaded into the model. I just want it to be a like a starting point. So right click and then disable the load by clicking on that little icon. Right, I now want to split this table apart into two, because really it's two separate sets of data. We've got our sort of number of review points, and then we've got our criteria, okay? We need to have two separate tables with common fields. The common fields being, and again, you can you know go to whatever length you want to go to with this, but date, so I can hook it up to my calendar, I'll actually create an auditor table and a shop table. Those will become my dimension tables, and then they'll link down to the other two tables underneath. Okay, so let's create your auditor table first. So I've already got the calendar, that's my date table. So right click reference. So I just wanna pull from that query. Right click on auditor, remove the other columns, and right click, remove duplicates. Now in real life, using people's names as keys in tables is not great. Ideally you have some sort of employee ID or code, much more secure because typos and stuff can cause this to go horribly wrong. Um, an even more advanced way of doing this is to add an index column now to this table and merge it back onto the side of your master source potentially, or a feeder table off this, the actual next table I'll create. And then you just have the index, the auditor ID, the auditor index in your fact table, which will potentially make your model smaller and faster. However, we're sticking with the basics here, okay? So here's the auditor table. I've removed the duplicates and let's call this auditor table. Right. Do the same thing for the shops. So right click, reference, right click on the shop, remove other columns, right click, remove duplicates. And again, if you are gonna use text, then maybe back in your master source, make sure you uppercase these or tr use the trim and use the trim function or the clean. So right click, transform, uppercase, trim, 
all those sorts of things, especially if your data is being typed in, they're all the sorts of things that cause these keys to break. Um, okay, so this one is going to be called the shop table. Right click on your master source, and I now want to split this one apart. So again, reference, and those four columns, the first four, are going to be my review data. So right click, remove other columns. And this will be my review data. Back to master source, right click, reference. And then these four columns again, control click on those, right click, remove other columns. Could have just clicked on the other column, remove that one, I guess. And this is my criteria data. And it's this one that I'm going to unpivot. So I'm in here, I've got those selected, right click, unpivot other columns. It's a beautiful thing. So now I've got my number of criteria and this will be called criteria. And this will be called outcome. Okay, that's all good, and I'm pretty much ready to go. One thing I'll recommend is, you know, select these, right click, move to group, new group, and call it, you know, audit data or something like that, just to show that they're all related to that one, you know, master source query. Okay, we go close and apply. I've probably forgotten something, but we can always go back in and fix it. I go into my model view. So here's my calendar. And normally what happens is over the right here, these other tables get hidden. So let me zoom out. So I'll auto fit all. I'll just drag these across, these three. I know they're small, but I'll zoom back in in a second. Okay. So we have our review data and we have our three fact tables. Okay, so we just expand this out. So here we go, we're going to go date up to date and date up to date. And then we go auditor to auditor. Same thing here. And then shop up to shop. And the related fields are pinned to the top. So then we can just collapse this calendar, stack these three tables on top of each other, and we've got a nice sort of layout here. So with this, it's now easy to do our reporting. Okay, we can simply go back to our report. Okay, so now we can go to our measure, and we can say number of review points equals the sum and there's a column called ah, there's a column called number of review, review points. Never have a measure and a column with the same name, so I'll fix it up now. So that works, and I'll just go into here and rename this column as column. Okay, so my number of review points I can now slice and dice in here. So that's the total number and I can do it by, um, you know, by auditor or rather than by auditor, I could do it by shop. And then I can slice and dice it by date. So it all sort of feeds in, but then I can also do my criteria calculation. So over here, the criteria data, I can simply do a count rows now. It's a much simpler DAX function because I've got my data in the right shape. So every row is a different, you know, record, different criteria being assessed. So I can simply go to my measures, new measure, uh, number of criteria,
equals count rows from my criteria table. There you go, my criteria data. That is awesome. So I can simply drag that on, put it as a matrix visual, go for the grid and make it a little bit bigger. All right, and I can now slice and dice that by shop from my shop table. There we go. And from my criteria table, I can now put the criteria potentially in the columns. Excellent. And I could slice and dice that by outcome. So I can put the outcome in here as a slicer, make the items a bit bigger. And now when I slice and dice these, you can see the different criteria. I can also click on the shop and it will filter the data above. So it's interactive. You aren't doubling up your total counts over here, your number of review points, that's all good. And you can slice and dice it by auditor, by shop, awesome. So I hope you find that useful. Let me know what you think. Do you handle this in different ways? Have you considered what happens when you unpivot? Are you brand new to unpivoting? Share this video, let people know about the channel, and I'll catch you later.